Hello everyone. This is Amit Chaudhary. I am a radiologist and lecturer at Tata Memorial Hospital and Homi Baba National Institute, Mumbai. I thank the Indian radiologist team for this opportunity. I wish everyone best of health, especially with the ongoing COVID pandemic. Let's begin with the discussion on case-based approach of pediatric posterior fossa neoplasms. This is a child who on MRI scan of the brain, axial T2 and coronal T2-weighted images had a mass involving the lateral recess of fourth ventricle extending to the cerebellopontine angle which is iso-indensed to the gray matter and this is a classic location for wingless subgroup of medulloblastoma. The medulloblastoma is so called because of the WNT gene involved in its pathogenesis. Wingless medulloblastomas comprise about 10% of medulloblastomas. These are encountered in children under 3 years of age without any gender predilection. These medulloblastomas have best prognosis because they seldom metastasize. However, whenever these metastasize, the prognosis isn't as good. These are classically located in the cerebellopontine angle or along the lateral recess of the fourth ventricle. Enhancement as in all medulloblastomas is variable, varying from mild enhancement to avid post-contrast enhancement. These metalblastomas can be associated with Turcot syndrome, which is a combination of intestinal polyposis. This was a child who had a mass involving the lateral aspect of right cerebellar hemisphere, which is showing restricted diffusion on diffusion weighted images, is dark on ADC maps, iso intense to the gray matter on T2-weighted images, ipo intense on T1-weighted images, and shows heterogeneous post-contrast enhancement. The mass is seen involving the lateral aspect of the right cerebellar hemisphere, extending to the surface and abutting the tentorium cerebelli. So when a mass is encountered in a child which is showing restricted diffusion involving the lateral aspect of the cerebellum extending to the surface, abutting the tentorium, diagnosis of SHH or sonic hedgehog type of medulloblastoma needs to be considered. Again, this is known as sonic hedgehog because of the gene involved in the pathogenesis of this subgroup of medulloblastoma. The gene is so named after the video game character Sonic the Hedgehog. SHH type of medulloblastomas comprise about 30% of medulloblastomas and these have a bimodal peak that is they can be encountered in infants and in adults. There is no gender predilection. Prognosis is intermediate. When these tumors are encountered in infants, these usually have a good prognosis because of their favorable desmoplastic and nodular histological features. Classically, these are located in the lateral aspect of the cerebellar hemisphere are seen as surfacing neoplasms, often abutting the tendorium cerebelli. Enhancement again is variable, but most often these tumors show intense post-contrast enhancement. Metastases are rarely seen in cases of SHH medulloblastoma. However, tumor recurrence can occur in the treated tumor bed. These kind of medulloblastomas can be associated with Gorlin syndrome, which is a combination of multiple odontogenic keratosis, basal cell carcinomas, craniofacial anomalies, and have increased predisposition to tumors like medulloblastoma. This was a 16 years old boy who had presented with inability to kick the football, that is he would miss kicking the ball while playing football. And on imaging, this child on diffusion weighted image had a tumor mass showing restricted diffusion in the midline involving the vermis and the fourth ventricle, which was dark on ADC maps. It was hypointense on T1 weighted images and isointense to the gray matter on T2 weighted images and showed only mild post contrast enhancement. Screening of the entire spine did not reveal any drop metastasis. So in a child showing central or midline tumor which is showing restricted diffusion and is isointense to the gray matter on T2 weighted images with or without any significant post contrast enhancement, possibility of group 4 medulloblastoma needs to be considered. Group 4 medulloblastomas are the most common form of medulloblastomas comprising about 40% of these neoplasms. These can be encountered in all age groups and are thrice more common in boys compared to girls. Prognosis is intermediate to poor. Classically, these are located in the midline or in the fourth ventricle. Enhancement is none to minimal. Frequently, these medulloblastomas are associated with metastasis and these are known to have 
nodular leptomeningeal metastasis a classic site of disease deposition or metastatic deposition is the anterior third ventricle or the supracellular cistern group 3 medulloblastoma is another medulloblastoma which has a very poor prognosis these comprise about 20% of medulloblastomas and are seen in young children these are twice as common in boys compared to girls prognosis is poor with these medulloblastomas location again similar to group 4 medulloblastomas is in the midline involving the vermis and or the fourth ventricle enhancement tends to be variable but more commonly it can be peripheral or ring enhancing metastases are frequent a feature of group 3 medulloblastomas is that these can have a small primary tumor with florid or extensive disseminated leptomeningeal disease classically the metastases have a laminar or sugar coating appearance so medulloblastomas are the most common malignant neoplasms in the posterior fossa in pediatric age group and based on the locations these can be wingless or wnt subgroup of medulloblastomas which are classically located along the lateral recess of fourth ventricle or in the cp angle the shh or sonic hedgehog subgroup of medulloblastomas are surfacing neoplasms seen involving the lateral aspect of the cerebellar hemispheres which can often abut the tentorium Group 3 and group 4 medulloblastomas are midline neoplasms involving the vermis and or the fourth ventricle. This was a child who was treated for group 4 medulloblastoma and had presented with cerebellar signs that is the child had positive thrombus test and had inability to perform tandem walking and on post contrast studies one can appreciate extensive rectomeningeal enhancement which is seen involving the cerebellar fissures as well as the fourth ventricle pineal region as well as involving the surface of the brain stem in addition one can also appreciate a deposit in the anterior part of third ventricle or the supracellular cistern which is a characteristic appearance of metastasis of group 4 medulloblastomas as one scrolls through one can also see rectomeningeal enhancement in the temporal sulci on axial images again there is extensive leptomeningeal enhancement identified in the cerebellar fissures which is seen extending in the fourth ventricle and along the surface of the brain stem in addition one can also see the metastatic deposit in the anterior third ventricular region or the supracellular cistern this is the diffusion weighted mri of the spine of same child wherein one can see nodular areas of restricted diffusion seen involving the entire length of the spinal cord these lesions are seen as nodular areas which are isointense to the gray matter seen on the surface of the spinal cord and show post contrast nodular enhancement these are also seen involving the cauda equina nerve roots so classically group 4 medulloblastoma metastasis tend to have nodular metastasis which can involve the brain as well as the spinal cord similar to the primary neoplasm these metastases tend to show restricted diffusion however unlike the primary neoplasms which seldom enhance the leptomeningeal metastasis tend to enhance avidly so metastases are quite rare with wingless and shh subgroup of medulloblastomas however they are quite frequently associated with group 3 medulloblastomas which can have this linear enhancement along the length of the spinal cord which can extend down the cauda equina nerve roots giving the sugar coating or laminar appearance and group 4 medulloblastomas as alluded to earlier can present with nodular leptomeningeal metastasis or even deposits involving the anterior third ventricle or the supracellular cisterns this is an infant with posterior fossa mass which on axial ct scan images is predominantly hyperdense with multiple cystic or necrotic areas within on this sagittal reformat of the ct scan one can see the lesion which is occupying the midline of the posterior fossa again showing hyperdensity because of hemorrhage the same patient on t2 weighted axial images is seen to have a midline mass which is seen involving the vermis and the fourth ventricle which is quite heterogeneous showing multiple hypointense areas likely due to hemorrhage within associated with multiple hyperintense cystic or necrotic areas on susceptibility weighted imaging the mass is seen to have extensive areas of blooming that is areas which appear dark because of presence of hemorrhage and it shows heterogeneous but mild post contrast enhancement so an infant having a hemorrhagic highly heterogeneous neoplasm which is present in the cerebellum in the midline 
which can be associated with restricted diffusion a possibility of atypical teratoid rhabdoid tumor needs to be considered in this age group atrt constitute about 1 to 2% of all pediatric brain tumors are seen with a peak under 2 years of age and have equal incidence in males and females prognosis is invariably poor most children dying within 6 to 7 months 40% of the atrts are seen located in the cerebellum these are heterogeneous neoplasm with areas of hemorrhage and necrosis and does show heterogeneous post contrast enhancement this is an 8 years old girl who had presented with history of headache diplopia and projectile vomiting and hence underwent imaging and on this axial t1 weighted image we can see a mass which is hypoindexed to the gray matter in the posterior fossa predominantly involving the midline cerebellar structures as well as the fourth ventricle the mass is also strikingly hyper intense on t2 weighted images in this axial scan wherein we can see that the mass is occupying the fourth ventricle and extending through the foramina of lashka into the cerebellar pontine angle cisterns on diffusion weighted images the mass doesn't show any significant restricted diffusion and on corresponding adc maps we do not see any significant dark areas to suggest true restricted diffusion on post contrast studies the neoplasm is showing heterogeneous but avid post contrast enhancement and screening of the spine which included t2 sag as well as t1 sag post contrast images did not reveal any obvious drop metastasis so a neoplasm in a young child which is seen in the posterior fossa which is hyper intense on t2 weighted images without any significant restricted diffusion and extending through the foramina of lashka is an ependymoma so ependymomas are third most common posterior fossa neoplasms encountered in children after pilocytic astrocytomas and medulloblastomas these can be seen in very young children as well as older children and adolescents ependymomas are classified into two types posterior fossa a ependymomas and posterior fossa b ependymomas the posterior fossa a ependymomas are usually encountered in children under 3 years of age whereas posterior fossa b ependymomas are seen in older children and adolescents ependymomas are typically more common in males than in females prognosis is poor for posterior fossa a ependymomas whereas posterior fossa b ependymomas carry a good prognosis Classically posterior fossa A ependymomas are seen arising from the lateral recess of the fourth ventricle the posterior fossa B ependymomas are midline ependymomas which can be seen involving the obex that is the inferior most portion of the fourth ventricle both these ependymomas extend across the foramina of lushka and majendi and in case neurovascular structures enhancement is moderate in either types of ependymomas This is a 6 years old child who had presented with cerebellar symptoms and on MRI study on T1 weighted axial image we can see a predominantly cystic lesion involving the cerebellum with a mural nodule again on T2 weighted images we see a cystic lesion with a mural nodule and on flare images the cyst is partially suppressed contrast that with the csf in the fourth ventricle and the temporal horns which is more suppressed than the contents of the cyst and of course we again continue to see the mural nodule so in a young child with a posterior fossa cystic neoplasm showing a mural nodule the appearance is quite characteristic of a pilocytic astrocytoma pilocytic astrocytomas are most common pediatric brain tumors these constitute about 70 to 80% of neoplasms in the posterior fossa of which about 60% are located in the cerebellum these are encountered in children between 5 to 15 years of age and have equal incidence amongst boys and girls these are grade 1 neoplasms with excellent prognosis they have a median overall survival exceeding 90% at 10 years classically lesions in the cerebellum are cystic which show a mural nodule with the nodule showing avid post contrast enhancement the brain stem pilocytic astrocytomas tend to be solid infiltrative and have ill defined margins this is another child who had presented with cerebellar symptoms and cranial nerve palsies 
and on MRI scan, this is a flare axial image wherein we can see a large mass which is seen involving the pons, causing enlargement of the pons, resulting in a plump pontine appearance or a so called fat pons. It is also seen extending in the right cerebellar hemisphere. The mass is hypo intense on T1 weighted images, and on post contrast study, this mass shows mild post contrast heterogeneous enhancement. On diffusion weighted imaging, there is no restricted diffusion identified, and on ADC maps, there are no dark or hypo intense areas seen. So, a diffusely infiltrative mass causing enlargement of pons, resulting in plumpy pons, which is encasing the basilar artery. This is a characteristic appearance of diffuse infiltrative pontine glioma. Diffuse infiltrating pontine gliomas constitute about 10% of childhood tumors which are seen in the brain stem, of which two thirds are present in the pons which are seen as diffuse infiltrative pontine gliomas. Prognosis in these histone mutant gliomas is invariably poor with a median survival of approximately 6 to 7 months. Classically, these are seen as diffuse infiltrating neoplasms, expanding the pons, giving it an appearance of a fat pons. Frequently, these encase the basilar artery. These are hyper intense on T2 weighted images and show no restricted diffusion. These tumors also do not show any significant post contrast enhancement. The roof of the fourth ventricle is formed by what is known as the fastigium, and the floor of the fourth ventricle is formed by the tegmentum. This is important because the origin of the tumors arising from these structures can help us narrow the differentials. As in, medulloblastoma is a tumor which arises from the roof of the fourth ventricle, can involve the cerebellum as well as the fourth ventricle. Ependymoma is a tumor arising from the floor of the fourth ventricle, which frequently extends to the foramen of Lushka and Majendi. And then we can have brainstem gliomas, especially diffusely infiltrating pontine gliomas, which are seen as neoplasms, which will be expanding the pons. To conclude, we have this algorithmic approach for the posterior fossa neoplasms, which can be helpful in narrowing the differential diagnosis. So first and foremost, we look at the location of the tumor. If the tumor is cerebellar in location, we look at the diffusion characteristics, whether the tumor is showing restricted diffusion or not. If the tumor is showing restricted diffusion and is located in cerebellar hemisphere, which is surfacing or has nodular post contrast enhancement, possibility of the SHH subgroup of medulloblastoma can be considered. If there is no restricted diffusion and the tumor shows solid and cystic areas, or typically a cystic lesion with a mural nodule, raises a possibility of pilocytic astrocytoma. If the tumor is located in the fourth ventricle and it shows restricted diffusion, then these can be medulloblastoma, particularly group 3 or group 4 medulloblastomas. However, tumor without any restricted diffusion will usually be an ependymoma. If the tumor is located in the foramina of Lushka or the CP angle and shows restricted diffusion in a child under 2 years of age, possibility of ATRT needs to be considered. If the child is above 2 years of age, then a wingless or subgroup of medulloblastoma can be considered. However, if there is no restricted diffusion in a tumor located in foramina of Lushka or the CP angles, again a possibility of ependymoma needs to be kept higher in the differentials. Then we have tumors located in the brainstem. Again, brainstem neoplasms can be located in the pons or in the medulla. So pontine neoplasms showing restricted diffusion are usually high-grade tumors. Example, embryonal tumor with multi-layered rosettes. Those without any restricted diffusions usually constitute diffusely infiltrating pontine gliomas. Tumors located in other brainstem structures like midbrain or medulla oblongata, again, may or may not have restricted diffusion, wherein tumors showing restricted diffusions are usually aggressive high-grade neoplasms, whereas tumors without any restricted diffusions are low-grade glial neoplasms.